Okay, welcome back. Uh, sorry for uh, the short delay. I well, I go directly to introduce the next speaker, Dr. Hans Toll from Deal Defense. We will learn what can do photonics in the defense and security field. I make very shortly and I stop talking. So please uh, okay. answer. Thank you, Antonio. I apologize for this uh, inconvenience, but we had a technical problem with the, with the PC and also my knowledge about handling these things is not that great. So therefore I have some other um, capabilities which are hopefully recognized in the defense industry. And that's what I'm going to talk about uh, at the moment. I'm working for the deal company uh, for the defense since 25 years, yeah, years now, and I'm heading the uh, department for electro optics and electromechanics which are about 40 people uh, engaged in optical engineering, detector technology, me mechanical actuators, lasers, and uh, things like that. So in my talk, I will give you a presentation of um, some selected items of missile technology, introduce also the deal group so that you get an idea about the market that I'm talking about and about the technologies, which are quite uh, unfamiliar to that what the real markets uh, know about. Therefore, I think it's good uh, to give an overview about uh, these topics. So we introduce the deal group shortly. A deal defense is part of this deal group, which has five uh, units, uh, deal metal controls, aviation and uh, metering. And uh, these four units are all in the civilian markets. Um, some of them deal with photonics, for example, avionics has a large uh, engagement in lightning of uh, airplane cabins or metering, which have uh, remote, uh, let's say, reading of meters for water thermal and gas flow. And finally, uh, defense, which is engaged in defense, as the name says. Uh, our headquarter is in Überlingen at the Lake Constant. You see the picture on the left hand side uh, and our portfolio of products are guided missiles, air defense, ammunition, reconnaissance and protection training and also infrared modules uh, from our sister company AIM infrared module modules in Hyper. So what, what I will show you is a short selection of uh, products from the missiles because I'm going to talk about photonics and the missile technology. Here we see uh, <clears throat> the six examples. Uh, one of them is the Sidewinder you see on the left hand side. This has an infrared imaging seeker to guide the missile to its uh, target, which operates in the three to five micron range. IRST is our flagship product in the missile. Uh, in the missile arena, also in the three to five micrometer infrared wave band. Uh, the same is for the rolling airframe missiles on the right hand side. Uh, very special about this pr products is the one called IDAS that you see in, on the left. Um, left row in the middle. Here we have fiber optical link. This is a missile which is launched from a submarine. So it moves in water, then breaks through the water surface, moves in the air, and all the time uh, it is, it is um, connected to the submarine by an, um, a fiber optical link. And the image of the seeker is, is transmitted through the fiber optic links uh, to the commander of the submarine. So it's quite a challenging technology, not only from the uh, communication side, but especially from the optomechanics for the fibers that we all did in the house here by us ourselves. And finally, we are also engaged in the long wave, long wave spectral range 8 to 12, with very, very small seekers for ammunition. And here the challenge is, is the high G. There are about 30,000 30, G at the launch uh, sequence of this ammunition. So it's quite a challenge here to use uh, components. And here we also use components uh, of the shelf that we buy on the market uh, for infrared uh, equipment. Very uh, important is that we not only do not missiles, but we also do the air defense system uh, that launched the systems. Here's an example of that uh, with the family of IRST, SLS, uh, MK3, SLM. Maybe we, we have the missile um, adapted to this new launch um, situation. And then with our partners from other companies and other countries, we build a complete 
ground-based air defense system. So this is quite short uh, and very fast our capabilities in the missile range that I um, think is worth showing here so that you get a little bit uh, understanding of type of products which are quite different from the ones that you know because our products are produced to have a very very long shelf life ideally forever and no one wants to use them. That's quite a different approach uh, that we have and this makes our technology a little bit different from other technologies uh, that uh, use products for the consumer market. Now, let's go on to technology. What, is, uh, what are the sub-assemblies of a missile? Here we see there's the guidance section, and that is where my department is uh, active in. And this guidance section comprises a seeker. Here we see on the left-hand side the uh, infrared uh, seeker part, an inertial measurement unit so that the seeker knows uh, where to look at, electronics, a guard supply to cool the detector, and the power supply to power this guide section. Behind this we have a warhead section, normally a motor section and finally the control section which has fins and rudders in order to maneuver the missile. And also this part is uh, under the let's say working control of my department. So we are at the end and uh, at the beginning of the missile. Now let's look at some technologies that are important for the missile applications here, especially domes and windows. Normally we could say just uh, it's a dome, it's a, it's a closure, transparent type of closure, but here our, the dome has to withstand a very harsh environment and therefore it's uh, not so easy to find the right combination of material that is transparent in the spectral range of interest and it is also hard enough in order to withstand uh, rain and other types of atmospheric erosion. Here the trend is going from spherical, sometimes hyperspherical domes that we see on the left hand side and this is the RST seeker that you see on that uh, picture here to faceted windows uh, which are quite uh, interesting if you have to share the aperture in, as in this example with a radar. This is this red nose with a radar a sensor. There's always the question who is, um, which type of sensor is first. Um, and here we have this uh, very strange, uh, let's say, window structure there that has to obey aerodynamic um, requirements. That's important here. And then comes the optics. So you see at that point we have to deal how to compensate these types of uh, aberrations, how to compensate uh, the heat that these windows are emitting in the infrared spectral band. And that what will be the trend for the next uh, years and where we are happy to find partners that share with us this technology um, portfolio, let's say it that way, is a conformal window. A window that is totally designed to fit to the aerodynamic structure of the missile or other air vehicle. And at the same time, this is the window where the guiding uh, radiation has to go through. So here we face the optical aberrations that have to be compensated somehow. If we do not have much space to do that, and here technologies how to do that, for example, with um, algorithmic possibilities, uh, hardware possibilities are very welcome. Here you see another problem in the, this missile technology in photonics, that is uh, the optics itself. There are different generations of missiles and uh, their seekers. The very first uh, seekers for missiles, they had spin stabilized uh, reticle seekers, which are just looking for hotspots. Uh, and then they uh, assume that the hotspot that they see are the targets. The inertial measurement was done by using this spin stabilized uh, structure, which was a spinning top. The optics was quite uh, simple, a mirror design and a single element detector or few element detectors behind that. The next generation uses more sophisticated uh, stabilization of this um, 
of the line of sight of the seeker and also combination of uh, mirrors and lenses because here we had a couple of uh, elements that were moving around and looking uh, for targets to so generate the guidance signal and the new generations uh, that we're looking at have this type of Kobe, Kobe uh, optics uh, and the whole structure on the optronic side of the detector is strapped down. That is, it is not moving. The optics is moving with an optical joint. That is the vertical line that you see there. That's an optical joint. And here we have uh, quite uh, large challenges uh, with respect to optics, this optics uh, design, stabilization, and, um, yeah, and radiometric properties. Let's call it like that. So I presented these uh, few graphs to give an idea where other companies uh, could uh, participate uh, in uh, these um, missile uh, technologies. That, that you just get a feeling about uh, these um, products. Here you see a picture of a uh, seeker assembly uh, with the outer gimbal and the inner gimbals, which uh, moves the line of sight of, this, of the sensor with angle encoders. Uh, detectors, coolers, inertial measurement units, uh, and this uh, diameter is quite small, or roughly uh, 10 centimeters, uh, so just to get an idea of and everything that you need, uh, mechanically, optically, electronically, cooling devices has to fit in the small volume. That's the challenge that we are facing. Now, it's, uh, let's see what are the interesting parts for the future. Where will we go? What will be the trends? Uh, the trend is going to faster missiles, of course. Uh, hypersonic speed is the key or buzzword in this uh, context. And here we will change. Um, we will face challenges with regard to the dome window materials to resist this high heat flux and uh, atmospheric erosion with this high speed. There we also will generate plasmas in front of the dome or window. And so the question is how to place these structures uh, conformally into the mechanical structure of the missile. I just showed you the picture we had before, and you can see that we are swap driven, size, weight, and power. And of course, as usual, cost is an important point, but we are not designing to cost. Cost is important, but it's a design driver, let's say, in the second tier. In the future, we need multispectral high frame rate imaging sensors in the infrared but also combination of infrared and other spectral band bands are highly welcome here. I, I told you that we have to compensate the operations induced by the conformal dome. So free form optics is uh, one of these uh, things that we are looking into. And here, I think that uh, class optics might be a good uh, candidate uh, to produce these shapes uh, that are required to co cope with these uh, types of operations that we are facing. The question is uh, if meta materials or face coded uh, optics uh, are of value at that point, this is an open question that has to be answered uh, from the point of modeling theoretically, but also from the point of manufacturing technology. So, what can be manufactured with sufficient quality that fits into this volume and into this environment? Then there are lots of uh, quite uh, fancy things around uh, in meta materials, nanomaterials, nanophotonics, but none of them really fits into the seeker environment. Another topic is uh, nurture measurement units. We have on the one hand side the MEMS um, measurement devices, which are small, nice, but do not have the required, um, let's say, data for our application on pen of have on the other side, the laser guided, the laser gyros, which have the required parameters, but which are quite large and expensive. So we have to find the right uh, way in between somehow. Maybe quantum technology, quantum gyros may hear of, may be of help. And also slip rings is an important uh, topic here. We have this uh, optics uh, and in some types of seekers, also the electronics and detectors on the gimbal, and we have to transmit the electrical signals from this gimbal to the rest of the seeker of the um, 
of the missile and here we use slip rings uh, which are standard uh, electrical but i think optical slip rings might be worth to look into the area of high power semiconductor lasers is quite interesting uh, for us uh, because of optical proximity fuses i told you one of sub assembly is a, a warhead and when do we fire the warhead? So we have a fuse uh, that really determines the right uh, timing uh, for firing the warhead. And this could be based on the lasers, and here I think semiconductor lasers are the right choice. Besides these, let's say these um, Zika-based photonics, there are other photonic components that we are looking into optical cabling instead of electrical cabling to communicate signals within the missile because you can, can imagine that it's quite a noisy environment that uh, we have to transmit the signals there. Infrared optical fibers are of interest for test equipments that we use uh, to um, test the, the specifications of our devices. We have optics integration and test technologies because we uh, design our optics. We, we procure the components and then we mount uh, our systems ourselves. So there we need also integration tools, te test technologies, and for the mechanical parts, laser added manufacturing is really uh, something that could be of quite um, large help for us. So I come to the conclusion, sorry for this fast uh, going through this presentation, um, but I think the main points, uh, I hope the main points uh, could be conveyed uh, to you. So missile guidance and controls is an electromagnetic and therefore in our case of photonics uh, technology, so inside the missile seeker, inside missile integration and also in manufacturing these devices. In the future, we look at quantum technologies, which, what they could provide us, uh, especially quantum gyros, could be a candidate to fit into the MEMS and the uh, laser gyros gap in between. And one very important thing is uh, to remember that uh, defense product development cycles are quite long compared to civilian cycles here. So what we need uh, as suppliers are companies which are looking for long-term business and which are also stable to survive quite long term. Um, and that should be also a successful business there. There are ups and downs in this defense um, arena and the business has to be that stable to survive these down periods, uh, which are always there. Yes, I thank you very much for the attention and I hope that you get a little bit insight in the photonics needs uh, that we have. Thank you so much. A very, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, it's only a pity that we had uh, some technical issue at the beginning. So we have no time for a lot of questions. By the way, I personally take care to, to put in touch uh, all the people asking for questions and uh, clarification uh, with uh, Dr. Toll. Thank you so much. We'll see you very, very soon. One minute uh, back. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, thank you again.